Hello, lovely internet strangers. I welcome you to the fifth episode of the Anti-Feminist Diaries. I had planned to post the first video in my Reading the Feminist Canon series, but I felt compelled before moving forward with more content to put in a video why I call myself an anti-feminist and how I got to using that label to the extent that I use it, and a little bit about my journey out of feminism since I have made allusions here and there. I allude to it in my very first intro video for this channel. I've alluded to it throughout the Anti-Feminist Diary series, and I've made comments on their videos, but I've never really put it in one spot. And this is still probably not going to be like the definitive video on how I left feminism, why my beliefs changed, why I call myself an anti-feminist now, but I'm going to try to do my best to give the best overview, and I apologize, this video was not very planned. There were a few notes that I jotted down. This video is not a deep dive on any particular topic, and so I'm going to gloss over things and not going to be able to provide all the statistics and sources for some of the things that I say. If anyone has questions, would like to discuss things, would like me to do a video on a particular topic and deep dive, that's fine. But I'm just trying to give some context about my understanding of feminism and my relationship to it and how I got to where I am now. When I was a youngin, I didn't know what feminism was. I was raised in the 90s, which was the sort of second sexual revolution. I was a big fan of the Spice Girls. It was all about girl power. You can do whatever you want because you're a girl. What was on TV, Charmed, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Buffy, Xena Warrior Princess, all these shows with these strong female protagonists. You know, that was what I was seeing. And then when I went to college, College, that was where I became indoctrinated into feminism. I already was predisposed to anxiety and depression. I was already struggling with those things, but I can honestly say that the years that I spent as a feminist were the most aggressive years for me, anxiety and depression wise. So let's take the feminism that I was indoctrinated into and separate it out from past feminism. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that I agree with the entire worldview of all past feminists either. That's part of my project to go back and read the feminist canon and to read about the historical context for women, primary sources, what women thought at the time, so I can make a determination for myself, so I can really research it. I already know that there were women who, for example, didn't want the vote because they thought that the vote was going to come with the same responsibilities that men had to fulfill when they got the vote. However, suffragists were able to get the vote for women without them having to fulfill those responsibilities. So, you know, rights without the responsibilities, the anti-feminists back then just didn't know how good they were going to have it. But leaving aside all past feminism for now, the feminism that I was indoctrinated into in college came with a victim mentality. It came with an oppressed and oppressor narrative. And feminism did more to make me feel that as a woman, I could not succeed than any man ever has. So you have to believe that you're not equal to men. You have to believe that you don't have the same rights as men. You have to believe in the wage gap, not the earnings gap. You have to believe that there is a conspiracy to keep women out of STEM fields. You have to believe that there's this mythical nebulous force called the patriarchy. And yes, the patriarchy is a historical artifact, but the way that it's talked about now and the way that it's used, it's, it's a boogeyman. It's the devil in the religion of feminism. You have to believe in rape culture. So you have to believe in bogus statistics about how many women are getting sexually assaulted on campus. You have to believe all women, no matter what. You have to believe that even men in a civilized society are inherently dangerous. You know, you can't laugh at jokes that could be considered sexist. You have to believe that people don't want you to succeed because you're a woman. So once I became a feminist, I started to swim in these waters on Tumblr in particular, following all these blogs, reblogging, misandrous things. I could do a whole video on all the misandrous things that I used to reblog and all the ridiculous feminist Tumblr posts that I was like, yes, agree. This is totally accurate and makes sense and isn't hateful and harmful to people. I was in Voices for Planned Parenthood. I had a very feminist friend, a black feminist friend who I made the last anti-feminist diaries video about. It was about two years post-college before I met my husband. And for those two years, I just continued on. I was just reblogging all this feminist 
nonsense about the boogeyman of the patriarchy and statistics I never fact-checked and, you know, hot takes and ridiculous feminist misreadings of TV and movies and getting offended at every little thing and outraged at nothing and feeling really on edge all the time. So I met my husband in 2014 and he is an anarcho-capitalist libertarian. And at that time, I didn't really know anything about libertarians. I'd heard the word, but I wasn't one of these women that had some really bad association with it. I'm just a naturally curious person and I just went on the internet to try to find out everything I could find out. And at that time, I was a feminist and I was trying to figure out if libertarianism and feminism were compatible, not necessarily so I could become a libertarian, just so I could know if he and I, you know, share the same values was this going somewhere? What did this all mean? We would get into arguments a lot about feminist issues. And I started to realize that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I had gone to college for four years and I knew nothing about economics or history or the history of politics. He knew so much. He had been educating himself and reading on all these topics since he was 14. So what did I do? I decided to get educated. So I started reading about economics, short version. It all unraveled from there. I read economics in one lesson. That was the first one I remember reading. And then I also consumed a lot of content on YouTube because he watched a lot of content on YouTube. And it wasn't like he made me watch things. He would just send me a video here and there and I would check someone out. I would start doing my own searching, finding different YouTubers who it would turn out he already knew about. And that process for me at that time was very difficult. There was always like this feeling in my chest of being upset, of what am I watching? I don't agree with this. I don't like this. But I also don't have good arguments against it and I'm trying to figure this all out. Through a variety of content on YouTube, I started to question feminism. I was still feminist for a while. It wasn't until the very, 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 very end of 2016, after being dumped for my political beliefs, that I was ready to really say I am not a feminist anymore. And that was only after I'd spent a lot of time watching other videos from other women on YouTube about why they weren't a feminist anymore or why they were never a feminist. So it was this very slow slide down the cliff away from feminism. Part of it did have to do with the election happening that year, seeing what all my friends were posting on Facebook, especially the feminists, and seeing some of the crazy feminist responses to things like the idea that when Trump got in office, suddenly you weren't going to be able to get an IUD. Everyone should just run out and get an IUD right now. And I was horrified because that's such an incredibly irresponsible recommendation to make to women for them to, based on your fear mongering, go out and make this serious life decision for themselves. You have no evidence for such a thing. That's just one example of the kinds of things that I was seeing and starting to realize that I wasn't like that or I wasn't like that anymore. That as I had been doing my reading, as I had been exercising my intellectual faculties, as I had been grappling with all these different arguments that had started to awaken certain processes in my brain of critical thinking, of skepticism that had not been working for a while. The worst thing about getting indoctrinated into feminism was I lost the ability to think for myself on a wide variety of issues. The thing is, you don't know me personally, but I'm not stupid. I'm pretty smart, all things considered. I graduated top of my class in high school. I went to not an Ivy League school, but a college with a very, very, very academically rigorous workload. So I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid by any means, but I fell hook, line, and sinker into the cult as I sometimes refer to it. I majored in psychology and was into statistics and research methods. And I'm always, when I see studies, you know, looking for the source to read the original study and see what the sample size was and what the discussion actually says and the p-value. But when it came to feminist issues, when it came to ideas that fit my narrative, I stopped doing any of that. I had a set of talking points that I had picked up. Jordan Peterson has really described this the best that I've ever seen. The automatic 
automatic output of an algorithmic machine. It's like stimulus comes in, person says X, you become triggered. You have a default response to that statement. You don't actually listen to what they're really saying. You're not engaging them in an argument. You don't even really know why you just said that. You have no facts. You have no arguments. You don't know the other person's argument to actually argue against it. You just have this innate feeling that they're wrong, but you can't explain why. And you start to feel really, really angry and upset. And you can't understand why, because you don't realize that what you're feeling is cognitive dissonance because you can't back up your own arguments. And having tried to have conversations with some of my friends who are, I would say only mildly possessed by feminist ideology about these topics, you can see it play out. And it's so scary to watch. And the thing is that someone who's possessed by feminist ideology isn't always going to be someone who it pervades their entire life. Like this is how they approach every interaction and every conversation. For some people, it just is going to come out on certain topics. You know, you'll think you're having a normal conversation and then all of a sudden you're talking to an ideologue and you're not talking to your friend, you're not talking to your sister, you're not talking to your coworker, you're talking to an ideologue. You're talking to, as people have put it, a non-player character. They have a set of responses and that's what you're going to get. And if you try to, you know, go off script, that's really not going to work. It's really not that person's fault in some sense. You know, I have a lot of sympathy for feminists who are indoctrinated because I used to be that person not too long ago. And a large part of what helped me out was meeting my husband. I honestly don't know what my life would be like if I hadn't met him. I shudder to think that I would still be on Tumblr reblogging the kind of shit that I was reblogging and that I would be unable to think for myself. The further that I get from it, the more insane it seems that I ever was stuck in it. Then in January of 2017, we had the Women's March. I was not a fan of the Women's March. I've never been a protest person in general. I have no problem if other people want to protest, but I didn't like the disingenuous need of the march, calling it a women's march when really it was an anti-Trump rally, which is fine, you do you, but it was not a women's march. And they specifically disinvited pro-life women. And by pro-life women, I mean largely Christian pro-life women because Muslim women were still invited to the march, even though the religion of Islam does not support women getting abortions. There was a lot of typical behavior by women of shaming other women, condescending to other women. I had a friend on Facebook share this medium post about, well, aren't you so privileged to sit on your high horse and not understand what all your feminist foremothers did for you? Oh, you just don't worry your pretty little head. I'll I'll march for you and your daughter because, you know, you're too stupid to realize that, you know, you should be out here supporting our march. And I just could not even with this post. So that moment really pushed me firmly into the camp of saying, okay, I'm not a feminist. But at that time, I was kind of chilling. I was just not a feminist. Feminist do you. I'm over here not being a feminist. But at the same time, I was feeling this weird disconnect from the world. I was feeling like essentially like someone who just escaped from a cult and was deprogrammed and then has this urge to go run and tell the world about the cult that they just escaped from and we how we need to go help the people that are still in the cult. Now, the thing is, I am not saying that no one should ever be a feminist if that's what they want to do. But I really want to live in a world where feminism is just one option of many of what you can believe, that no one expects you to believe this because you're a woman, that you're making an informed decision about being a feminist. And it's not something that you are indoctrinated into. And it's not something that robs you of your critical thinking skills. So I continued my education. You know, I continued to watch content on YouTube. I looked for for more women who are speaking about these issues. And as I started to consume more content, my thinking definitely evolved and I was further out of the cult. I had more possession over my own mind. So let's dig into the whole anti-feminist concept a little bit. So generally when people hear anti-feminist, they think of particular people on the internet, maybe a particular, if they're internet savvy, community of people on YouTube that make, or usually in this case, made anti-feminist content because anti-feminist content is actually not that popular anymore. This year and last year, I've definitely seen a downtick in 
the attention given by YouTube content creators to explicitly criticizing feminists or like putting together things like feminist cringe compilations or things like that. Now the number of explicit female anti-feminists are very few. There are more women who may be called anti-feminists by other people. For example, even going back to the 70s, there's a woman named Esther Villar. She wrote a book called The Manipulated Man. She would be considered an anti-feminist by mainstream feminists, even though she herself consider herself a feminist, but a feminine feminist, a woman's feminist, a, a true feminist, many people would consider Camille Paglia to be an anti-feminist, even though she considers herself a feminist of the first wave. So there are very few actual identified anti-feminists. Karen Strawn, Janice Fiamango, and I believe Diana Davison would probably identify herself as an anti-feminist. It's not surprising that most people don't want to slap on the anti-feminist label. If you put anti tie in front of something that people assume is a good thing, then people are like, what the hell is wrong with you? Please explain. Why do I call myself an anti-feminist? Well, one, very pragmatically, it's for the YouTube discoverability because just calling myself a former feminist isn't as catchy, isn't as discoverable. I want people to find my content and I want to be visible as a woman who opposes this modern feminist movement and thinks that there is a way for women to decide for themselves how they should act and how the world should be without just taking a set of answers out of a box that will explain everything because it won't. I'm interested in the truth and a lot of what feminists believe is not the truth. I really don't use the word anti-feminist in real life because I don't really want to get into a whole explanation. I didn't have this video yet so generally the way I engage in conversations with people is to ask test questions. Like I test to see if they think that biological differences between men and women are a thing. So if they do, then that's a good sign. We have a basis of common understanding to work from. If they push back on anything like that, then I will definitely really not engage with them about anything because it's just not going to go to a good place. So I don't just come out and say, I'm a libertarian. I'm an anti-feminist YouTuber. I just try to engage in the conversation. I try to ask questions that don't make them super on edge. I try to like, especially if it's someone I'm going to have multiple conversations with, I try to, you know, gain a little bit of ground and trust in one conversation. And then maybe in another conversation, when I have a different opportunity, I will push things a little bit more. It's very rare that I find someone that I feel like I can just, you know, deep dive with right away without having them be like, whoa, 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 like what the hell are you talking about? It's weird for me because in some ways I'm extremely opinionated. I have an opinion on almost everything. But the extent to which I actually share those opinions with most people is fairly limited. And not just because I am afraid of what they're going to say, but I just don't care that much. Like I have the opinion, but it doesn't matter to me. I am not my opinions. I am my character. What makes me me is how I act, even when no one's there to catch me out, when no one else is watching, when no one is making me do something for someone else. That's why the anti-feminist label is one I mostly use on this channel and I really haven't ever used it in real life with anyone beyond my husband and my two male friends. My two female friends who know about me being not a feminist and also a libertarian, I haven't used the word anti-feminist with them. So maybe a little clarity in wrapping up on what I believe. I believe that in the United States, women have all the same rights as men. There are some rights that feminists wish that women would have that are additional, like the right to paid family leave, but women share equal protections under the law. And if any feminists would like to explain to me how we don't, I would love to hear it. But so far, no feminist has shown me any evidence of such a thing. I believe that there is not a wage gap. There is an earnings gap. There is a difference between the average earnings of all men over their lifetime and the average earnings of all women over their lifetime. But really there is an earnings gap between mothers and everyone else. When you compare single men and single women, single women actually come out a little bit better. I don't believe there's a major conspiracy to keep women out of STEM fields. I don't believe all women, just like I don't believe all men. I don't believe all people. I believe in due process under the law. I believe that women have equal 
intellectual capacity to men. Although I do believe in the bell curve that there are way more male geniuses than female geniuses, but there are also way more male psychopaths. But I generally believe that women can compete in, in an intellectual meritocracy. However, I think that women don't experience as much rejection in their lives as men do just by virtue of what men have to go through in the dating world. And I think women are very, very sensitive to rejection for a lot of biological and evolutionary reasons. And this makes it more difficult for them to be ambitious and to pursue what men have achieved. But I believe that women have agency. I believe that they have the power of critical thinking. And I believe that they are capable of taking on duty and taking personal responsibility for their own actions. In my opinion, feminism is an ideology. And in my most honest opinion, it is a religion. The feminism that I was indoctrinated into in college and the feminism that continues to pervade the media and the conversation. I'm not talking about individual women who call themselves feminists. I know plenty of women who identify as feminists and they're nice and they're good people. But feminism as a force in society, feminism as an ideology, in aggregate, what it is doing now in society, I believe believe is detrimental for a whole variety of reasons. I believe that modern feminism gives women a lot of outs. It gives them a lot of explanations so that they don't have to take personal responsibility, that they don't have to change their behavior. They don't have to change the way they're approaching their dating life. They don't have to change the way that they're approaching their career. They don't have to try to become a more ethical person or to learn from their mistakes. They can just wonder why their ex was so terrible, why they're not getting paid enough at work, why they're not in the place in their life where they would like to be, why they're depressed, why life is so hard. Feminism provides explanations for all of these things. And I think that unexamined feminism does this huge disservice to women. All that I can hope to do with this channel and any future book that I might write is to add my voice to the women talking about how they left feminism because those videos were pivotal for me and so helpful to me and so comforting to me at a time when I really needed them. And to be someone that young women can look to as an example. Not that I think I am the best role model in the world, but if you're a young woman looking for a woman who thinks for herself, here I am, happy to talk anytime. So I hope that that answers a little bit more about where I've come from intellectually, where I've come from with feminism, where I am now, and if I haven't answered everything, please comment down below with any additional questions, and I'm happy to make a follow-up video at some point. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I'll have more content for you very soon.